we are going to discuss about iterative statements. So what is the iterative statements? So, iterative statements are used to execute a set of statements repeatedly while some condition is true. As we know that the flow control mainly talks about how the instructions are executing runtime and internally how the instructions are executing. Sometimes some instructions are repeatedly calling. If you want to execute statements repeatedly, we should use iterative statements. In Java, there are three iterative statements. The first one is a for loop, while, next one is a while, and third one is a do while. Apart from this, we have one more loop is there, one advanced loop. That is a for each loop. So this is the syntax of for loop. The first one is initialization, condition and increment or decrement. And this is body of the loop. How this for loop will be execute means first in initialization section we need to initialize all the values. After that we verify the condition. If the condition is true, then only it will execute the body of the loop. If condition is a fail, so this will be terminate. If condition is a true, this will be execute. After executing this one, it will perform increment or decrement operation. Again, it will check the condition and it will execute this one. And again, it will perform until this condition is true. This body will be repeat these statements. So what are the statements here? We are writing that statements will be executed. For loop contains uh, three parts, majorly three parts or three sections. First one is the initialization section, second one is condition, third one increment or decrement. Each and every section or each and every part is separated by semicolon and it is a mandatory. Coming to next point, every part must be separated with a semicolon and it is a mandatory. Means all these three parts, initialization, condition and increment or decrement must be separated with a semicolon. Exactly two semicolons you have to use. Less than two and greater than two semicolon leads a compilation error. The curly braces or the curly braces are optional if you have a single statement. Means if you are not using any braces, so the scope of for loop is only one single line statement. If you have a multiple statement, so you must use curly braces. It is a mandatory means the curly braces are mandatory if you have a multiple statements okay now we will see all these points programmatically so here i have a for loop here i have a for loop so here i am declaring a for loop and i want to print the values from 0 to 10 now how to write the program means so first we need to declare a for loop and here i am initializing a variable that is i equals to 0 and i want to print the numbers from i uh, I want to print the numbers from 0 to 10. So you need to write the condition like i less than r equals to 10. Next you need to increment the value by 1. So you need to use increment the value. So that is what increment. Now so write a system dot out dot print ln. Just pass i. Now what will happen we will see. Just run your program. Now, so it will print what 0 to 10, it will print 0 to 10. Now how uh, this will be done means, so first here as we know that, so this for loop mainly contains three parts, like first one is initialization, this one is a conditional and this one is a increment or decrement section and this is the body of the loop. Now in initialization here I have declared a variable that is i and initialize the value with 0. Then after, then after it will verify the condition. Then after it will verify the condition. Zero is less than or equal to ten. So it's a true. So it's a true. So it will enter into the loop. If it is a false, so it will uh, terminate here itself. So zero, be, uh, zero uh, less than or equal to ten. It's a true. So it will enter into the loop. So it will print that zero. After printing zero, it will increment the value by one. Now zero becomes one. So one less than or equal to ten. Now it's a, again condition is a true, it will print 1 here. Okay, again 1 becomes now 2, 
now 2 less than or equal to 10 now 10 it will print here now so how many times it will repeat means so up to 10 times okay up to printing the 10 times means after 10 so what will happen so 10 becomes 11 11 less than or equals to 10 so here the condition is a false so here it terminates it will print 0 to 10 okay now as we know that this for loop this for loop exactly takes two semicolons less than two semicolons or greater than two semicolons leads a compilation error okay suppose if you uh, remove this semicolon suppose if you use a comma here what will happen so run your program means here i am using only one semicolon only one semicolon now it will ask you to what semicolon expected so what you must take two semicolons so suppose if you want to take one more semicolon like so here i am declaring one more variable that is i sorry into j now what will happen now it is also not possible in java why means it is expecting only two semicolons but here you are passing three semicolons so this leads a compilation error so again it will also generate a compilation error yes see here so it is a error okay compilation error so you must use you must use exactly two semicolons so this is a strong rule in uh, for loop okay now this braces are optional this braces are optional this braces are optional so suppose if i remove this braces if i remove this braces even if it is also possible even if it is also possible so suppose i have a uh, like a message hello okay now what will happen now we will see just it will print hello in one time okay why means so here you are putting the semicolon here itself so this will not enter into the this section so it will here only it will terminate every time it here only it will terminate so suppose if you remove this one so the scope of for loop is the scope of for loop is only one statement only one statement so now this hello will print 10 times this hello will print 10 times suppose if you want you can verify now see here this hello will print 10 times now suppose if you use one more statement if you use one more statement what will happen now i am using one more statement so now this time my message is hello good morning hello good morning so this is my message now what will happen we will see just run your application now see here it will print hello 10 times after printing 10 times it will print good morning only one time why means this loop this for loop only available to next statement only one single line statement only single line statement so up to here it will print At to here it will print and this will print only one time okay now suppose if you want to use a multiple statements so i want to repeat these two statements 10 times you must use what braces so if you are using brace if you have a multiple uh, lines you can use braces if you have a only single line statement without braces also it will work now see here hello good morning it will print 10 times hello good morning it will print 10 times so this is one rule okay yeah now this as we know that so this statement so suppose control j yes without braces also it will work without braces also it will work suppose if i declare if i declare if i declare int j if i declare int j if i declare int j so this is not allowed this is not allowed so this for loop this for loop takes what uh, without braces it will uh, the scope of for loop is only one statement and that should not be declarative statement okay so this is the next statement of this for loop so this should not be declarative statement so it will leads a compilation error it will leads a compilation error so if you want you can verify now see here variable declaration not allowed here okay it is not allowed here so you must use the braces if you want to use this one 
you have to use the braces. Now it will work. Now see here, it will work. The next point. Yeah, so this is the execution flow of this uh, for loop. So first it will execute initialization section. Next it will print in next step it will verify the condition. If condition is uh, false, so here only it will terminate. If condition is uh, true, it will enter into the body of the loop in next step. That is the third step. And in fourth step it will increment the value by one. And in fifth step again it will check the condition. And in sixth step again it will execute the body. And in seventh step it will increment the value by one. And in eighth step it will again it will check the condition. In ninth step it will execute the body. And tenth step it will execute the increment uh, or increment or decrement section. So likewise it will execute until this condition becomes false. Means this initialization section will execute only one time. This initialization section execute only one time, and the remaining will be execute depends on the condition. This remaining section will be execute depends on the condition. So now we will see how many ways to declare the for loop. Okay. Yes. So how to declare this for loop means? So if you write like this, it will lead infinite loop. It will lead infinite loop. So above statements are infinite loop. Okay. We will see with an example. And initialization section. Okay, so all uh, all three sections are optional. All three sections are optional. So suppose if you consider initialization section. Now, how many ways we can declare initialization? We will see now. Now, multiple initializations are possible. Okay, multiple initializations are possible, but that should not be different data types. You must use the same data type, and the all uh, initialization must separate with the comma. Okay, all sub all uh, uh, data types or oh, sorry, all variables must be separated with comma, and that uh, variables type must be same type. Okay, so we will see with an example all these points. Instead of initialization, we can take any we can take any valid Java statement. Okay, so that part also we will see. Initialization will be executed only once in for loop. Okay, as we discussed, so initialization section will be executed only once in a for loop. Okay, so we will see with an example. So suppose if you take this one. So here I am deleting this one. Now, just here I am passing one. Just wait a minute. So instead of declaring this variable, instead of declaring this variable, you can also declare this variable here. It will work. Zero. Now ten. Now if you run this program, it will work. So this is one possible case. Now it will print. Now in initialization section, multiple variables are what possible multiple declarations are possible like int some j equals to 10 int j equals to 10 like int sorry same variable right so just k equals to some 10 next l equals to some 20 or 30 whatever okay so likewise it will work okay so suppose if you want you can run your program Now it will work. See here. So what's the point? Multiple initializations are possible, and multiple initialization with the different data types are not possible. Means so suppose uh, if you want to take if you want to take different data types, like uh, suppose here I am taking here I am taking integer data type. So next I want to take double data type. Now it is not possible double data type like d equals to some 10.25 so like this here I am taking and so this is not allowed means different data types are not allowed here 
multiple initializations are possible the, but that should be same type different type is not allowed in for loop so one more uh, possible way is what you can take you can take instead of uh, initialization you can take any java statement in that okay so i am using So instead of here, so here I'm writing a valid Java statement like system dot out dot print ln and hello. Okay. So now, as we know that this part will be executed only once. So what will happen? We will see. First, it will print hello. Then after it will print all uh, values like zero to ten. Now see here, this will be print. So hello is printing only one time and remaining. will print what 10 times so this is one possible way yeah suppose if you want to declare one more uh, so suppose if you want to write one more java statement you this time you have to separate with semicolon so just type hello good morning hello good morning so now run your program now it will print like hello good morning and 01234567891010 okay now see here it will print hello good morning first time it will print hello good morning then after it will print 0 to 10 now this is the possible ways to declare in initialization section okay so this is optional as we know that this initialization section is optional so now coming to next one coming to next one the conditional section so unlike initialization this will be executed multiple times based on the condition check so initialization section execute only one time but this conditional section will be executed multiple times depends on a condition depends on the condition check means if condition is a true then it will execute if condition is a false so this will terminate okay now this part is also optional this part is also optional means you can declare you can uh, uh, write any statement or you cannot write any statement okay even empty statement also possible means it will so if you are not writing anything it treated as what true means empty condition section treated as a true okay so suppose i have a program like so suppose i have a program like so here i am deleting this one here i am deleting this one so what will happen now this will this will be treated as a true this will be treated as a true so it will becomes now infinite loop now it will becomes infinite loop so keep on it will execute keep on it will execute so this is this uh, leads what uh, infinite loop so this part also it is a optional okay and this part always expects a condition and that condition must return what a boolean value like true or false so true or false also valid suppose if you want you can verify again so this part is always true so it will print again it will print infinite loop so verify see here it is a verify now instead of this boolean so if suppose if i take any other value like 1 okay any other value like 1 so this is not allowed this is not allowed this must be what a boolean type or this must be condition okay so suppose by mistake if you are taking any other value so it will uh, leads to compilation error so suppose if you want you can run your program see here incompatible types this int cannot be converted to boolean so you must take boolean value here now suppose if you want to write any java valid statement also not possible in this case it is not possible in this case it is not possible suppose uh, like uh, here i am writing some valid statement like hello so this is not possible here this is not possible here suppose if you want to run you can run 
is incompatible types why means this println returns this println returns void this void cannot be converted to boolean so this is also not possible this is also not possible okay now these two these two are optional as we know that these two are optional now coming to next section that is a increment or decrement section coming to next section that is a increment or decrement section now we will see how to write increment or decrement section now this section is also optional means you can write or you cannot write okay this section is also optional means empty also possible so instead of increment or decrement we can take any valid java statement instead of uh, writing increment or decrement we can write any java valid statement now we will see with an example like so here i am not writing anything so now it will print what 0 10 times sorry it will print 0 infinite times now now see here 0 it will print infinite times so just wait a minute again i want to stop this one yes stop yes so it will print infinite times means all these three parts so what is the conclusion all these three parts are optional means you cannot write or you cannot you can write or you cannot write means empty also it is a possible right now here we can also write any valid java statement here we can also write any valid java statement suppose if i write if i write like hello if i write like hello now this hello now see here now if you run this program what will happen we will see this hello will be print infinite times this hello will be print infinite times so zero and hello zero and hello zero and hello it will print infinite times right so again i want to now yeah so suppose if you want to take one more statement you just put semicolon and just copy and so how many statement you want to take you can take but every statement you must separate with a comma that is a condition hello good morning now run your program Yes. So this is the way to declare a what for loop. This is the way to declare a for loop. Now, it is a possible to declare. Uh, yeah. So in for loop, so we have what. Uh, Next, all unreachable statements, all unreachable statement leads a compilation error. All unreachable statement. So I have a scenario. I have a yes. In Java, all unreachable statement leads a compilation error. All unreachable statement leads a compilation error. Suppose I have a program like so. Here I am declaring one more statement like hello okay i want to print this one means this is not allowed in java why means so this will be print infinite times this zero will be print infinite times means this statement in this uh, program so this statement not getting any chance to execute why means so this statement only ex keep on it will execute infinite times so this statement so should wait so until this statement finish so this statement will be execute infinite times so in this uh, lifetime so this statement not getting any chance to execute so this leads a compilation error so all unreachable see this statement becomes unreachable right see here so suppose this is an unreachable statement all unreachable statements in java 
leads a compilation error. All unreachable statements in Java leads a compilation error. Now see here unreachable statement. So all unreachable statements in Java leads a compilation error. Okay. So this is about a for loop. This is about a for loop. 